and what is it like preparing for a guy that you've seen so little film on? I mean, you prepare for what they do. I mean, they're not going to change their whole offense. Uh, you know, I mean, they got a week to get ready. I mean, they're going to do what they do. They're going to turn around and hand that ball to them big old backs. Uh, them dudes are good players. Uh, they, they, you know, Waters was third in the history of Duke. They're going to hand it. They're going to they're going to come off the ball with them big offensive linemen and try to. It's about blocking, and tackling, and fitting gaps. You know, moving people. I mean it. I mean, okay, yeah, I mean, he's got to – I mean, they're not going to just ask this kid to, okay, go win a game. They're going to ask him to do his job. Uh, that's why he's there, and that's why he's been practicing and, and all that stuff. But, I mean, they're going to they're going to tailor what they do maybe to uh, his strengths, but they're not going to change what they do. Uh, you know, they're not going to come in here and all of a sudden they're running a triple option every play. Uh, I don't think. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. But – I mean, this is a, he's a good player, though. And again, when you watch him, you, you just, he really, he really sparked him, I thought. And I mean, just, I watched every play just live, and I thought he just got better as the game went. And you could tell he, there was a lot of energy that he brought into it. And uh, he's a tough kid. And you, you can tell that because he's, he's not, he, I didn't see any fear in him at all. And, and, and he coming in a situation where, you know, you're, you're down, right? And you got to go lead your team. And it's the first time you played. I mean, this is a, it's a big moment. And I thought he handled it very well. So, um, you know, that's why they recruited him. But he's a, he's a good looking kid. And, you know, look forward to the matchup. You talked about the experienced O line that they have and the history of those running backs. But they've not run the ball super effectively the first three games. As you kind of watch film on that, is there anything that stood out to you? Or you kind of just say, like, I know, I've seen enough of these guys before that I know what they're capable of. Well, I think a lot of things happen in college football the first week or two. You know, everybody's still figuring things out. You know, you, you see some you see some weird things in college football, especially early in the season. That's just part of it. Uh, you know, I think you got to give the opponent some credit too. Uh, you know, but they're they're going in to score. It was ten to three late second quarter against Tennessee. And they're whatever they are on the on the 15 or whatever. I mean, they're they great drive. They're getting ready to go tie this thing up. Pick six, and all of a sudden, man, it just kind of got away from them quick. Uh, and again, a game like that, it's it's a you know now you're in a hole. So you know it's not like you're just going to line up and run the football when when you all of a sudden you got a, a pretty big deficit and it's the second half of a football game against a really good opponent. You got to you know it's probably not going to be quite what you scripted on your game plan. So some of that stuff is skewed, you know. I mean, there's a lot of statistics these first couple of games that, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't pay too much attention to them, you know. I mean, you know, you know sometimes who you play early can really skew things. Uh, but, you know, you, the picture will paint itself. But they, 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 these guys can run the football. And, um, you know, obviously, and too, they got some new pieces. Uh, you know, the, the new, the, really the center in there, but the backs, this is their first time playing uh, there. Quarterback, McCall's first time playing and getting there. But, you know, I, I, th this is a team that will be able to run the ball you know, when it's all said and done. I mean, that's how they're built, and, and I don't have any – that's what they've always been able to do. And, and then they create explosives. I mean, they create a lot of explosives and shots, uh, you know, through the run game. So, yeah, I mean, I think the game – kind of got a little crazy in the Western Carolina game. That was kind of a uh, same thing. Weird stuff happens. If you really watch the game, I mean, you can give Western Carolina some credit, too. I think they did a heck of a job. Um, and then there were some mistakes and some turnovers and some things that happen in, a, in, in games sometimes like that and that I think frustrated them. Um, but, hey, they did what they needed to do and won the game. And then the same again, Tennessee, they're in a, it's a really good battle. And here's a pick six, and all of a sudden the game's away. Now you're not really going according to game plan. Flip side, look at uh, the La Tech game and, and kind of what happened there. Quarterback's out, uh, you know, uh, just some – just some still probably filling out some things. But when it's all said and done, this is a team that I think will be able to run the football. Hopefully not this week. Uh, you know, that's a that's – I promise you this. Uh, we, we, we've got to be able to – you better be ready to stop the run against NC State.
if you're not, if you can't stop the run against these guys, you, you're in for a long day. Because again, everything comes through that. Uh, if they can stay on schedule and create explosives, you know, especially moving the pocket and some of those things, you got you got some issues. How was the tackling against Appalachian State? Our tackling? Yeah. Uh, it was good. I mean, it was it was I thought better. Uh, we got better uh, from the Georgia game. You know, we gave up. Uh, it was I'm talking about it, and I'm talking about our guys that, you know, we it, it was 56 nothing at half. You know, I don't think anybody saw that coming. Uh, I mean, I'd like to say I saw that coming, but I I didn't see that coming. Uh, you know, but our kid, the, the, these kids, they just played great, man. I mean, and just you know, here we went, and so now all of a sudden you, okay, Peter Woods gets banged up. You know, I mean. We, 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 that's, that's not a good press conference, right? You get some guys hurt and it's 56 nothing, and, and uh, you know, why are some of these guys in the game? The, the, the frustrate it's easy on offense, right? Because you can just go out there and guys can play, you can punt. But on defense, when you sub a bunch of guys and you got some guys down there that have been over on the scout team all week and now they're out there having to execute a game plan because the app isn't subbing, you know, and, and now all of a sudden it can be a little frustrating. And, because, you know, you, all of a sudden your stats get jacked up and, you know, but they need to play too. They need to play. And so you need to coach them. And it was an opportunity. So you just have to kind of take a deep breath and, and not get too frustrated about it um, and let those guys play. Uh, so some of those guys were better than others. You know, there were some guys in there that maybe had a missed tackle or two that, Probably not going to play much, uh, you know, in, in some of these games. But it was an opportunity to get them in the game. Maybe was even some walk-on guys. So, uh, but I, I thought we did a, a a good job in that first half with our our first group. You've seen the three-three-five stack a bunch. The way they do it, what's the particular, I guess, problems they present, and then are there any differences in the way they attack that you see on film the first couple games? Well, I mean, you know, first of all, them, them three guys up front are they're explosive. Uh, you know, they, they got a little twitch to them. They're, they play violent. The backers, Zero's a heck of a player. Ten's a good player. Um, but just it's just their ability to be able to um, manipulate things in coverage. You know, they can be drop eight on first down, and they can be cover zero on first down. Uh, you know, they and, – and, and really, there's – that happens a lot and anywhere on the field. So – you know, they create some challenges. You know, you got to be really disciplined post-snap. I think that's the biggest thing, um, you know, and really diagnosing what they're going to do coverage-wise. Uh, so, but they, they're not afraid to take some chances. You know, they, they'll, they can bring a lot of pressure, you know, a lot of, a lot of twists, a lot of movement up front, um, and, and how, they, how they fit the gaps, you know, with the, with the second and third level players that they have. But, and then if they drop eight, you know, they really want to challenge you to try to, throw the ball down there and it's it's hard to throw the ball downfield when you got a bunch of guys so you have to be able to have some patience and and take what's there obviously you got to be able to run the football against some of that um, but that's not all they do you know i mean they they're just multiple with you hear three three five and you think okay well they're they're not just a big drop eight team i mean they do a lot of that but they're they're cloud they're invert i mean it's straight cover zero uh, you know, it's it's robber, it's 2D, it's Tampa. I mean, they got a little bit of everything that they can get to. So I think really being schooled up um, post snap is critical on where to go with the ball in the in the in the in the pass game. But no different for them. For us, it starts being able to run the football. You know, we've got to be able to get our hands on them. And again, that's easier said than done. You know, because they they they're moving around, and you got to identify guys. Uh, make sure everybody's on the same page, but um, that's what we practice for. Kind of playing off of that, their, their corners are tall and physical. Uh, kind of interesting to see your, especially when they go cover zero, how your freshmen handle that this week. We're going to find out because uh, they're going to do it. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, it don't matter who they play, they, they, they're not afraid to line up and challenge you. Uh, so, you know, this is a game where you got to make those competitive plays. And, uh, you know, we didn't make enough on them last year. We made a couple. We had a, had a huge uh, missed opportunity on a third down that we should have had. And, um, you know, you watch that game. We, we missed some opportunities. We had a big play called back because we had a penalty. Uh, 
you know. So I mean, there, there was there was some missed opportunities, and uh, but we battled back and gave ourselves a chance, but it just it wasn't enough. You know, pick six, another turnover. You know, they're going to force you to make competitive plays, and to make those plays, you, you got to be where you're supposed to be. The ball's got to be accurate, and you got to protect. Uh, so, you know, that's 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 what uh, that's what it comes down to. Talk about this being a kind of underrated rivalry nationally. Does the fact that uh, states won two of the last three kind of give some extra juice, maybe on, on the players' end? I, mean, I guess there's probably some guys on the roster that, that are one and two against NC State since they. Yeah, uh, that is that's that's. That's a fact. Uh, if they're a junior, that's what they are. Uh, but you know, if you're a fourth-year guy, then you know you, you or a fifth-year guy, you got a different record. Uh, if you're me, you got a different record. Uh, so I've been in a bunch of these. Uh, you know, it don't really matter. None of that stuff matters. Uh, we just need to win the game. We need to win the game. None of that matters. Saturday when you kick it off, you got to go play this game. That's the only thing that matters. How you do this week? have Peyton Wilson, a guy who had been such a big part of their defense over the years. How have you seen them try to kind of fill that gap? And I'm, I'm assuming you don't mind not seeing him out there. Yeah, he's a great player. Didn't the Steelers take him? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Steelers. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was like, man, that's a great pick by the Steelers. I mean, he, he, you talk about like just he, I think of him, I think of a he's a perfect fit for the Steelers. I, I, I really love him as a player. I just thought he was a great one. Um, and, and a good good kid too. Uh, so, but I mean, you know, number ten stepped in there. Zero was a heck of a player for him last year. I mean, he's a really good football player. Um, you know, two is a guy that's been kind of in that that nickel nickel spot for them. I know he got banged up last week, but uh, I mean, they just they keep bringing in good football players. They coach, they do a great job of coaching them. They got a lot of continuity within their staff, a lot of continuity within their development and teaching and. And uh, again, good experience. So, I mean, it's, he's a great one. He's gone, but you know, these guys have done a done a nice job for him. <clears throat> Coach, when you have that offensive explosion and then you have the bye week, what are some coaching tactics to keep the momentum rolling, even though you guys didn't have a game? We 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 played open. You know, let's, we still had a game. You know, we we always say we play Clemson every week. That's kind of our. That's our mindset. It, it really, and that's really what we try to instill in these guys. Is it's, it's, it's not about who you play. It's about how you play, and um, you know because if it is about all those other things, you have inconsistency in your preparation, inconsistency in your performance. All right, and you know I think one of the reasons we've been in a not a perfect program, but a very very uncommonly consistent program over the last you know, uh, 12 four to 15 years is that mindset. So, you know, it's not an off week. It wasn't an off week. It's just another work week. We're playing Clemson this week. Uh, and let's don't lose to Clemson. So how did we do that? Well, let's have great preparation. Let's have great meetings. Let's be intentional. And, and let's, let's, have, let's have great passion and energy at practice. It starts with us as coaches. So... It was no different. We had four good work days, uh, and instead of traveling to the hotel on Friday, hey, they got to be off for a couple of days. But same thing, they're off. But hey, guys, guys, are opportunity to get some treatment, watch some tape, watch some football, learn from other people. And there's no greater thing than being able to learn from other people. Uh, I do that as a coach all the time. It's one of my favorite things to do. It, it just you know, whether it's situational stuff. You know, game management. Uh, you know, to to specific X and O stuff. I mean, that's so it wasn't. We we played open. I think we had a. I think we had a great week. I think we beat them. Uh, so now we're into a new week. So it's not. There was no off week. It was just a part of our schedule. And now we're, and now we're on to to this opponent. Um, and same thing. Let's don't lose to Clemson. You know. Uh, so I think that's the main thing. And I know that, that may sound coach speak, but that's really what it takes. Because if you create something different, you're, you're, to me, you send the wrong message. You know, and again, it's, it's the only way you're going to create that consistency in your performance is consistency in your preparation. And, you know, that's, if you're walking out on that field, if you're going in a meeting 
it shouldn't matter if there's a game Saturday or not. That, that's, that's important. And we have to set the tone for that. And that's what we try to do. I don't know if I answered your question or not, but that's what we try to do. You're watching games on a off Saturday for you. Obviously, you're watching NC State because you got them coming up next. Is there what else? What else comes to, like besides what your viewing habits are on a off Saturday? Who, how do Man, you I'm gonna tell you, I I I am a big YouTube TV guy now. All right, I discovered I got I finally figured out how to get that freaking app on my phone. Uh, it's like a act of Congress. Uh, I mean, you got to have like birth certificates and all kind of stuff to get some of these things. I mean, like I don't know all these codes from. You know, who's your provider? I mean, it's some crazy stuff on there. But anyway, I got I got the YouTube TV, and, man, it was awesome. I had my phone going. I had my iPad going with four screen, and I had the TV going. I would imagine some of y'all probably did the same thing because uh, that's what you do for a living, right? Like, y'all got y'all to gotta know what the heck's going on. I'm, And, I mean, we had a lot of teams playing that we're going to play. And so that's really what I did all day. I just watched ball all day, and it was awesome. Uh, and just fun to watch, you know. Saw some good stuff, saw some bad stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, just enjoyed it. Talk about Brian Wesco and DJ Moore being able to learn some new positions. Is that just strictly flipping the outside, or they get some work in the slot too? Uh, we, we just kind of pretty much they, they are learning their two spots right now. Uh, but formationally, you know, they can move, but that's a part of their position. You know, does that make sense? Like, they don't just line up. I mean, they're, they might be the X, for example, but certain formations, the X is, is in the slot or he's in a trip set. I mean, you know, so that's stuff that they are all part of. But as far as a different position, we're just asking them to learn the, the X and the Z right now. So uh, we haven't really asked them to move around. They're not flopping. You know, we're not asking Wesco to go to Z. We're, that's just kind of where they are right now. But again, formationally, they can, we can scheme them up wherever we want them. Um, but over time, you'll, you'll eventually they'll, they'll be able to, um, I think, play multiple positions. I think, I think TJ, I think he could definitely play all three positions at some point. Uh, he's not ready for that right now, but at some point he he, he will be. Uh, he, he's really, and I think Wesco is, is a true XZ guy, uh, but, you know, not that he can't play in the slot, but I don't see him as a true H. You know, he, he could be a, a formational s slot guy, uh, you know, play design, stuff like that. But um, he's, he's and, and, and same thing with TJ. I mean, he's a, he's a very natural X and Z. But he's one of them, one of those unique guys that I think would be very fluid in the slot. A true, true H guy. He could, he could play any of them. Put him wherever you want. At some uh, point. Antonio still plays in slot. He can play anywhere. Yeah. He can play all three spots. You know, t that's that's kind of how I see TJ in time. I mean, just play anywhere that you need him to play. Uh, Antonio can do that. How does uh, Tyler Venables missing the first half kind of impact the the defense and the safety positions of for Saturday's game? I mean, yeah, I mean, so you got one of your, you know, he's a he's a, a key depth guy, key contributor for us, very knowledgeable player that all of a sudden, you know, you got to, you hope that, you hope that you can hold up in the first half, um, you know, and, and, and guys can stay healthy and stuff and you don't need him. Um, you know, that's because, I mean, again, he's a he's a guy that can, can go play. Um, but, and then obviously it impacts us on special teams, but it is what it is. You have to be ready for it. What have you seen from the running back rotation behind the film off, particularly on what the film said about App State? Uh, well, I mean, you know, not much of a rotation at this point just because we played two games and, and you know, the Georgia game was, I mean, it wasn't, I watched the Eagles play last night. I didn't see much of a rotation. Uh, I saw them hand that ball to Saquon Barkley and throw it over there. So, you know, we got in the Georgia game and we only had 52 snaps. So there wasn't much of a rotation um, to where we felt like we needed to get Phil out a lot. But obviously, you know, as you go through your season, you're hoping that we can create rhythm and, you know, drives and, and all that stuff uh, to where it naturally happens. And you're, you know, snapping the ball 70 to 80 times a game. And uh, <clears throat> I think that will evolve more as we go. Uh, so um, pleased with those guys. I mean, I thought Jay Haynes got in there and, 
he averaged, I think, I want to say it was like nine, almost 10 yards of carry. Uh, and, you know, Easy E did a great job. Uh, they all got some opportunity. And so, you know, and they took advantage of it. So it was, it's, it's good to see. We feel we, we really like our guys uh, that we have in that room. So, but it all, again, it all starts with Phil and, you know, we'll make sure he gets what he needs and then, and then we'll, we'll see how they roll from there. Speaking of Phil, I think one of the players said that he, he went over 20 miles per hour on that 83 yard carry. Were you surprised to see him break that 20 mile per hour barrier? I was not, I was not, man. He can run, he can run. People don't really know how fast he is. He's a 230 pound guy. I mean, he can move and he got, the, the great thing about that is he got stronger. You know, he, he's, a, he's got some, he's got some uh, uh, long speed, you know, uh, and the ability to really uh, finish a long run. That's, that's not, not easy to do, uh, but he gets stronger as he goes. Same thing in a game, he gets better as he goes. But, but when he gets out in that open field, man, you, you better get him quick because he's, he's, gonna, he's not going to steady out. I mean, he's going he's gonna to accelerate and keep it going all the way through. I mean, he's just very powerful. But he really practices that way. If you watch him at practice, I mean, anytime he runs at practice, that's what he does. He finishes long runs. He runs. If we're backed up, if, you know, we got the ball in the 20 or whatever, you know, that's where we're working on a team period or something, and he'll, he'll run, he'll, he'll sprint all the way to the goal line. So he practices those long runs. Um, but no, I was not surprised at all. Um, other people might have been. You know, because again, you just look at him and you think he doesn't have that type of speed, but he can really run. Is that a great teaching play? And you rewind it several times because I think Brenning Stool got a nice seal block and maybe Sadler told him got one to show if you do this. I, I mean, that clay was a clinic. I mean, you got five offensive linemen, you got five blocks. You got two tight ends in the game, you got two blocks. The only person not blocked is the safety. Well, that's the running back. We can't block them all. So that's his guy. Well, he beat his guy. And then the receivers did a great job of getting those guys wide and outside. And then, uh, you know, uh, I think Wesco stayed inside. And then they gave great effort getting down the field to try to give him a little escort, if you will. But everybody was blocked. But that's what you draw up. Like, that's when you do a play, you know, you're like, okay, well, we're going to block this guy, we're going to block that guy. And you got, you know, and you. It's a beautiful thing when you see it when you see it come to fruition like that. It was it was awesome, and we can't block the safety. So Phil, you got him, and I mean it was it was uh, that's the way every play should work. Every play is designed to score theoretically, uh, but that one that one worked. A lot of them worked. Uh, a lot of them worked in that game. So we need a little more of that. Richmond Weaver, Tiger Tailgate Show. NIL and transfer portal is obviously a focal point in college athletics today, but you seem to continue to emphasize Paul Journey. Why is that so unique and why you continue to emphasize Paul Journey? I mean, that's it's a, just a foundational piece to this program, to the purpose of this program. You know, the number one thing is graduation. Um, we know what we've done there. Um, I mean, you can come look at everybody's picture on the wall. I mean, we got, we've got a lot of guys that have – um, gotten their education and have taken advantage of the opportunity and, and that's well documented. Um, the second thing is really equipping them as men. That's what Paul Journey's all about. Uh, it's, it's teaching them that, you know, not life after football, life's happening right now. Life's happening right now and trying to help prepare them, you know, and, you know, more than just a guy that can run a route or rush a passer. Um, that's very important. And so, you know, career opportunities, networking, uh, you know, exposing them to so many different things, whether it be through community service or micro internships, uh, and really creating a vision for them beyond the football field. I think that's really important. I mean, I, I, mean, I think ultimately that's our main, main responsibility is who are they going to be as men and husbands, fathers, what kind of leader can they be? So. Paul Journey is a leadership initiative. We're really, truly trying to build, you know, use this platform of, of football and education to build great leaders and great men. That's, and that's what Paul Journey is all about. That's, and that, we got six people that wake up every day, and that's all they do is think about how we can help these guys uh, do life better. Because life is hard, and life, life is hard. We all know that, right? And it never gets easier. 
you just learn how to handle the hard better as you live life. You know, it really ever get easier. You know, we just you just learn how to manage things better as you go through. And so, but these are really young people, and you're trying. To, so Paul Journey is about equipping them. You know, it's life skills. It's it's basic stuff. I mean, how to tie a tie uh, to you know just again specific career stuff, financial stuff. Uh, now we have that's what NIL has been great for us because now you have true hands-on opportunity to even further prepare them for the real world as opposed to theory you know this is you know hey what what you know we've always done financial literacy here we've always done tax education we've always done that but now you got real world application so it's even more important and um, so it's just it's a great thing it really is and um, you know I think that's another reason why you know kids stay here they see the value that comes with being a part of this program and um, you know our Paul Journey ambassadors that's a great program that's they're elected uh, you to become a Paul Journey ambassador that's not an easy process and you got to be voted on by your team but it's a big deal it means a lot to these guys uh, so again it's a true leadership and that's what we need we need good leaders and it's a true leadership initiative uh, that that is I think one of a kind in all of college football uh, I really do it's a curriculum you know, it's what you do as a freshman. It's what you do as a sophomore. It's what you do as a junior. It's what you do as a senior. This is what we do collectively as a team. And it's a true curriculum that, you know, hey, we execute the plan, you know, year in and year out. And, 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 it's, and, it, and you see transformation in these guys' lives as they go through it. If they stay, you, you'll see the transformation uh, in them. You know, again, through all the things that we do. But Paul Journey really helps us you know, fulfill a big part of our purpose. And, you know, the, the third part is having a good experience, having some fun, and the last part's winning a championship. And, you know, we've fulfilled that purpose, you know, for 16 years now. And, again, everybody that's come here since I've been here has won a championship. Every, everybody except last year's freshman. That's it. Obviously, this guy that right here just got here, but every, everybody has won a championship since that came here, since February of 2009. And, you know, so we've, we've not, the world changed, but the purpose hasn't changed. How you go about fulfilling that, has, those, that's always evolving. Um, but we still live it out every day. And Paul Journey is, and it's, it's, it's really special. I mean, doing an awesome job. And Jeff is, Jeff is, uh, Jeff is great, man. I mean, he just does such a, such a great job. You know, with those players, and so does Joel. Josh Watson's back now, working, doing our our career development side, and Anton and Kayla. Uh, you know, Chris Miller. We got we got a great group over there that that, that work with our, our our players. Got time for one more for Coach? If anybody has one. You got an update on Tyler Brown and how he plays again? Yeah, he's uh, out there yesterday. Same thing, day to day, getting better every day, and uh, we'll see how it goes Saturday. All okay. right. Okay, Thanks appreciate it.